Brooks has to oh, Sometimes I get so mad. But in the paper, it must be true. Our story opens today in the beautiful little village of Frostbite Falls, Minnesota, where the... That's Frostbite Falls? Uh, where our heroes, Rocky and Bullwinkle, are... Uh... Which way to go, Black Eagle? Go on that way. Come on, Sheriff. We'll head him off at Eagle Pass. Now, wait a minute. That isn't the Rocky show. It... Can we do something? Check the monitor, will you, Sam? I, I got it. We're all clear here. Well, you got the uh, crossover man? Yeah, I, I can't think why it's... Well, look, uh... see if you can trace it on line 12. Right, right, right. One moment, ladies and gentlemen, please. We seem to have a Western on in place of the Rocky show. Hey, somebody's hooked up number 27 here. Uh, well, you better pull it, Jim. OK. Uh, that's better. Now. Now, who could have... I cannot tell a lie, boys to pity. I did it. You did it? But why, Bullwinkle? Because I'm just crazy about Westings. You're just crazy, period. Can I help it if I'm a cowboy at heart? But you're already a big television hero type. Yeah, but why don't I ever get to wear a big hat like Cougum Twombly? Well, there's a good reason. I'm not a U.S. Marshal? No, your antlers are in the way. Yeah, that's right. Well, it looked as if the nearest Bullwinkle would ever get to the Wild West was on his television set. You aim to draw, stranger? <laughs> You, you said, said it, Trampus. Then make your play. All right, a right, uh, oh, He got me! Bullwinkle, what's the matter? That's the third time this season he outdrew me. Yeah, but that's... I the... must be slipping. You're just what? Bottom gum, that's me. Yes, Bullwinkle oh. was cowboy happy, all right. Every morning, he'd rope the milk in off the front porch. Every evening, he watched the television from his saddle, and at night, he even took to wearing his spurs to bed. Ow! That does it! No more westerns for a week, Bullwinkle. No more westerns. I can't kick the habit cold like this. Come, come, Bullwinkle. Are you a moose or a mouse? I've been awful afraid of cats lately. Well... Oh, come on, Rocky. Just one itsy bitsy teeny weeny peek of two gun twombly rides again. Well, just this once. You gonna draw, stranger? I, I was fixing to. to. Then make your play. Or I'd right, have just... No, no, you've done it. I sure have. I beat him. But Hot film again, fast as in the west. We're in the north. The northwest. But look at the TV. I can't, it's bust and I... Bust? Oh, what have I done? Yes, a TV that was bust meant a whole new life for Bullwinkle. For after only a week of staring at the silent set, he began to read. Raunchy ranch tales, cowhand comics, side saddle stories, the evening paper... How back it in there? Bullwinkle, you've got to get your mind on something besides Westerns. Well, okay, I'll read the Womp ads instead. Thank goodness. But even that seemed to be a bad idea, for Bullwinkle's eye immediately lit on a very interesting ad indeed. Look at this, Rocky. For sale, Lazy J Ranch, 1,000 acres of top bottom land. Your chance to go west fast. Box 1313, Squaw's Ankle, Wyoming. Full price, $28. Solid question. $28. That's a lot of money. Yeah. Now, we don't know anything about ranching. Yeah. On the other hand, it is a new adventure. Yeah. And the rating on our show's been slipping a little. Yeah. So let's do it. I figured if I waited long enough, you'd be back. Let's go. But if only our boys had looked at the front page of the paper as well, they would have seen that they were headed directly for trouble, real trouble. Don't miss our next episode, Fast and Moose, or The Quick and the Dead. Once upon a night, there was a cat, which in itself isn't unusual. What is unusual is that this particular cat had cold feet. But being smarter than the ordinary cat, he had a plan to remedy that situation. He climbed to a fence by one of the small houses of the kingdom and began to yowl at the moon for all he was worth. Inside of the small house, a young man who worked very long and hard in the okra fields for his bread and beans was sleeping. Or that is, he was trying to sleep I reason that uh, he will soon grab the first thing that's handy, which will be his boots, and throw them at me and shut me up, and... Ah, here they are now. The cat then slipped on the boots, and his feet were nice and warm. 
Meanwhile, the young man suddenly realized that he had thrown away the only pair of boots he had in the world and quickly dashed out to get them back. He saw the cat wearing his boots and grabbed the rascal by the neck. Something's the matter with my throat. I can't talk. Trying to steal my boots, huh? Just for that, I'm going to doom you. Now, if there is anything that Pussycat didn't want, it was to be doomed, and he did some mighty fast talking. Ah, uh, please, man, don't doom me. Why not? I'm a magic cat. You're crazy. No, really, I could talk, can I? Uh, you know very well ordinary cats can't talk. Not even in cartoons? I'll prove it to you. I hereby give you three wishes. Oh, boy. All right, magic cat. For my first wish, I want you should make me rich. Easy, man. I'll get to work on it first thing in the morning. Early the next day, the cat set about the task of making the young man's first wish come true, but not exactly in the way that the young man had imagined. Now, you stay in there. You want to be rich, don't you? Yeah, but... Relax, then. All you have to do is stay 150 rounds with that monster, and you'll win a million pazuzas. Yeah, but... A million pazuzas is a lot of pazuzas, and... Good grief, here it comes. <laughs> No, no. The fight was on. And oh my, the berserk Turk was more berserk than he'd ever been before. He fought like a madman, and the poor young man took an awful beating. Oh, but that smarts. Oh, that's going to be blue tomorrow. But somehow, the young man held together for the required 150 rounds and won the money. Well, I did it, man. Yesterday you were nothing. Now look at you. Let me ask you, am I still alive? That I don't know, but what's your next wish? No, 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 you don't. I couldn't stand another wish. Go away. Ah, no, nonsense. You still have two wishes coming. You're not going to waste them. Well, I, I... Uh... Now that you're a man of means, how about wishing for a big house to live in? Come on. We'll get to work on it right now. Now it so happened that the only house for rent in the kingdom was one inhabited by a huge ogre. But the rent was a little more than they could afford for... Two million pazuzas. But the clever cat had a scheme. He took out a small jar of termites and set them loose in the house. Psst. Hey, Yoga, come here. You're missing the chance of a lifetime. I am? Why, sure, you got a pigeon here. You should sell him the joint. The place is loaded with termites. Take a look. Termites? Good heavens. I had no idea. Well, I'll August sell them do, you know. The ogre quickly sold the house for one pazooza and 38 cents, which is a good price even for a termite-infested house, and whoa, dashed whoa, whoa, away whoa, whoa. happy as a troll. What kind of a magic cat are you? You let me buy a house that's falling apart. Get out of my sight. Go away. Ah, uh, not so fast. You still got one more wish coming. And... I don't want it. Ah, uh, with it, I will get you a bride so you can live happily ever after. No, no, I don't want it. Uh... A bride? Right. Now you wait here. And the cat dashed off and in no time at all selected a bride and the young man was married. But he didn't exactly live happily ever after for... You're just a lazy loafer, that's what you are. Scrub the floors, wash the windows, pay the kids. Sheesh. What did you do, pick her out of a bunch of good ones? You pay attention to me while I'm yelling at you. Yes, my love. Now what about my fur coat? Yeah, what about that? I don't have one, that's what's about it. Everybody in the kingdom has a fur coat but me. You go into town this very minute and get me one. But you spent all my pazuzas, my love. I can't get No you. excuses. You get me a fur coat or else. So, once again, the young man turned to the cat and asked, Please, magic cat, grant me one more wish to help me get a fur coat. Sorry, man, but I'm now retired. Besides, us magic cats never grant more than three wishes to a customer. But I gotta have a fur coat. Don't come to me with your problems. You got yourself into this mess, get yourself out. All righty, I will. <laughs> uh, hey, hey, what do you think you're gonna do? Don't look at me like that. Stop. And so, once upon a night, there was a cat with cold feet, cold knees, cold chest, cold neck, cold face. The harder I try, the more I mess up. I'm just not going to try anymore. Watch all new episodes of 15 every weekend on Nickelodeon. I like to watch make real animal sounds. Like a dog, a monkey, a horse, and a frog. You can bounce them around and hear the fun. I like to tease. Silly friends. Squeeze. Silly friends. Hold. Silly friends. My silly friends. Silly friends. 
from Tiger. So our gym teacher, Mr. Fanazzo, <coughs> thinks we eat Kellogg's Frosted Mini Wheats because it's very nutritious. And they know I don't have a clue. <laughs> the sweet taste is so cool, and it's loaded with whole grain wheat. I've told them a thousand times they need frosting yeah. and lots of it. This stuff is essential for proper character development. Kellogg's Frosted Mini Wheats taste so good, who cares about anything else? Besides, it's part of this complete breakfast. One day, they will be the pillars of the community. <laughs> Grabbing grasshoppers, you never know when they'll pop. Grabbing grasshoppers, you never know where or when they're gonna hop, but grab the most and you win. Grabbing grasshoppers, you never know when, you never know where they'll pop. Yeah. Grabbing grasshoppers. I got magic cup here, look what I do. I draw a great dog, and now I have two. I draw and I doodle, make copies, you see. Great copies I keep just for me. Magic copier and travel magic copier, each sold separately. To, Junior. There's a circus going on at the Coliseum. Well, in your present position, you'll never get there to see it. What makes you say that, Pop? Well, look at you. Oh, my gosh. I put the pony in back of the chariot. That's what is known as putting the cart before the horse. Then while you're getting straightened out, I'll relate a fable illustrating that adage. But, Pop, I'll miss the circus. No, you won't. I'll make it short. This is the story of the three bears. I've heard that one. Charlie Bear and his wife Edna lived in a modest little home on the edge of the forest. One day after taking in a movie, they returned to their abode and made a rather startling discovery. Hey, somebody's been eating my borscht. And somebody's been eating my borscht. I've heard this story, Pop. Quiet. Further investigation of the living room brought out another remarkable fact. Hey, somebody's been sitting in my Danish Type Chase lounge. Somebody's been sitting in my Danish Type Chase lounge, too. The mystery increased as they entered the upstairs bedroom. Pop. Hey, somebody's been sleeping in our Chinese modern Hollywood bed. Somebody is sleeping in our Chinese modern Hollywood bed. That someone turned out to be their rich Uncle Fabian. You heard this one before, Junior? Uh-uh. Uncle Fabian, what a pleasant surprise. Bah! You're only glad to see me because I'm rich. Oh, tut, 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 what a vile thought. Let me hold your wallet for you, dear Uncle Fabian, sir. I'll give you a wallet right on the head. Later that evening, over dinner, a surprise announcement was made. I have decided to put you two in my will. Oh, what a sweet thing to do. It sure is. Let me hold your wallet, huh? Uh, there's only one catch. All my life, you know, I've been grumpy and irritable. Oh, you've noticed that, have you? Well, before I go to bear heaven, I want to be happy. Well, Charlie can make you happy, can't you, Charlie? Sure can. Let me hold your wallet. Early the next morning, Charlie attempted to make his uncle happy. First of all, he took him to the edge of the cliff. Look at that view, Uncle Fabian. Doesn't that make you want to smile? Bah! And Uncle Fabian pushed Charlie over the cliff. <laughs> Well, did you boys have fun today? I did, but Uncle Fabian didn't. Uh, I decided not to put you two in my will. Oh, you can't do that, Uncle Fabian. Oh, of course not. Got... Let me hold your wallet, huh? I'll tell you what. You've got all day tomorrow to make me happy. If you fail miserably, no legacy. The next morning rolled around, as mornings usually do. Now, this here is a golf club, Uncle Fabian, and that there is a golf ball. Now, you hit the ball with the club. Charlie fully expected that he would get hit instead of the ball, but incredibly enough. A hole in one! Oh, doesn't that make you happy? That's when Uncle Fabian took out his number two iron and beat his nephew unmercifully about the head. How's the head feel? Which one? Guess we're gonna finish out of the money, huh? Looks like, babe. Charles? Yes, Uncle Ebenezer. I mean, Uncle, Uncle Fabian. You almost made me happy today. Let's play golf again tomorrow. If you say so, Uncle Fabian. Oh, and, um, 
See what you can do about keeping the other golfers off the course. I want you and me to play alone. It was a strange request and not an easy one to fulfill. I'm sorry, Charlie, but I can't stop the other golfers from playing. In desperation, Charlie sought the services of an old owl who lived in a cave. Uh, you see this statue of a heart? And place it in front of the first tee and never look at it again. I guarantee you and your rich Uncle Fabian will have the cause to yourself. Hey, that's great, Owl. How much do I owe you? Eight cents. We got a special on statues of hearts this week. Charlie wasted no time in rushing to the first tee and placing the statue where the Owl had directed. The following morning, golfers from all over the land signed up to play golf, but ran into trouble. For on their way to the first tee, they casually glanced at the heart and were immediately frozen to the spot. Meanwhile, back at Charlie and Edna's house... No borscht for breakfast, Charlie? Oh, I ain't got time, Edna. Me and Uncle Fabian are due at the golf course. Well, you better hurry. Uncle Fabian left an hour ago. Oh, no. He doesn't know about the heart. Charlie dashed hell-mell through the streets and got to the course in record time. There, his worst fears were confirmed, for standing like a block of ice in front of the statue was Uncle Fabian. To make matters worse, Charlie, too, looked at the statue, and he, too, froze solid. Uncle Fabian was never to be happy, and Charlie and Edna remained penniless. And so, you see, son, never put the cart before the horse. I get you, Pop. Only there's a better way of saying it. Oh? Yeah. Never put the heart before the course. Never put the... Uh, let's go see that circus, Junior. urge to go west was pretty serious, all right. Particularly when he shot out the TV tube trying to outdraw two-gun Twombly. Fastest gun in the west. Unfortunately, he was the slowest TV repairman and not too bright. Oh, he looked pretty bright to me. And so our boys were reduced to ugh, reading in the evening. Dick and Jane see the dog. Wild. But then Bullwinkle came across a want ad that changed his whole life. For sale. Ranch style ranch, 1,000 acres, $28 full price. Low down payment. And in less time than it takes to tell, our boys were on their way to Squaw's Ankle, Wyoming. Alas, if they had only glanced at the front page, they might have changed their minds, for at that moment, a fearful monster was ravaging Squaw's Ankle. But little knowing the fate that awaited them, our heroes slumbered fitfully on a speeding cross-country train. Rocky in an upper and Bullwinkle in a lower. Gee, I just can't sleep, Doc. You that excited, Bullwinkle? No, my torso keeps dragging on the tie. Ooh! The train roared on through the night, and next day arrived at Squaw's Ankle, Wyoming. Well, here's where we get off, Bullwinkle. Right, Doc. <laughs> Are you hurt? Yeah, I think I got eternal injuries. You mean internal injuries. I mean eternal injuries. I'm always getting hurt. Howdy, strangers. Give you a lift to town? Yeah, but first give me a lift into the wagon. And so a little while later, our heroes found themselves in the friendly western town of Squaw's Ankle. You fellas fixing to stay on a piece? All a piece of what? Bullwinkle, he means are we here to stay. None of us are here to stay, Rock. Me. We all got to go sometime. Mighty glad to have you with us, Rocky. Aren't we, folks? You bet you. Yes, sir. Well, thanks, Mr. Mayor. You too, Bullwinkle. Likewise. Just where are you figuring on staying while you're here? Well, we bought a ranch just outside of town. Why, that's wonderful. Ain't it, folks? You bet you, you sir. What ranch did you buy? It's called the Lazy J. The Lazy J? Oh! That's great, ain't it, folks? Uh... Oops. Gee, Bullwinkle, everybody left. Not everybody, Rocky. Look there. Sure enough, a lone figure still remained, holding a pencil and paper. I bet you want our autograph, don't you? No, I just like your measurements. Measurements? Must be one of those tailor fellas. My card, gentlemen. Uh-oh. Dudley Digg, licensed undertaker. Uh-huh. Six foot two inches overall. No, no, not overall. Something a little sportier. Waist 36. I'd like a little padding in the shoulders, too. Oh, you'll get padding from head to toe. Uh, how about a belt in the back? Bullwinkle, he's an undertaker. I don't want to tell you how to run your business, mister, but aren't you a little early with that tape measure? Just a few hours. A few hours? See you a little later. Yeah. 
Though, of course, you won't see me. Gee, the sun must be down, Borwinkle. All of a sudden, I feel a little chilly. How about you? Just my feet, Brock. We better go find our ranch before it gets dark. I'm with you. Stick close to me, Borwinkle. If I was any closer, I'd be on the other side of you. And our boys began to move through the deserted town on their way to the Lazy J Ranch. Little did they know that stark terror awaits them there. Funny, he said he'd meet us at the train. Be with us next time for Buzzard Bait or the Carrion Call. Hang tight. Nickelodeon's Moosarama will be right back. Just a cheetah here. I'm a hang loose kitty riding the crest of Surf City. Life's a beach when Cheeto's paws are in reach. Whoa, bro. Check out the surfer girl shooting the girl. Awesome. And Big Alfonso going gonzo. Gonna dangle on this wave till I wrangle what I crave. Cheeto's brand paws. The cheese that go on. Crime. They're the sleekest, most graceful, most beautiful horses in the world. Grand champions. There's the Palomino, gold dust, strong, sure-footed, and fast. With his western saddle and bridle, he's a rodeo champion. There are jumping champions, too. The Black Stallion Midnight gets special grooming because he's a grand champion jumper. Palomino and Black Stallion, each sold separately. Other horses also sold separately. The most beautiful horses in the world. Grand champions. Morning, sir. What's this all about? The sweet taste of two scoops of raisins. The big guy would like to have some Kellogg's Raisin Bran with you fine Americans. You're kidding. No, ma'am. We're not allowed. Two scoops of juicy raisins have the taste everyone's sweet on. Kellogg's Raisin Bran, part of this complete breakfast. What if you were lost in New York City? Now you can get your own Home Alone 2 games, free on specially marked boxes of Kellogg's Raisin Bran. Lose a turn! You are in the Ozone. And now back to Nickelodeon's Moose Aroma. And now for the uninformed, here's the biggest informer of them all, Mr. Know-It-All. Greetings, brain builder-uppers. Today's subject is swimming can be fun and wet. Now, in order to swim, one must have a pool. And in order to have a pool, one must have a hole. <laughs> and this one here. After lining the hole with cement, Fill it with H2O's, which is soft water. We are now ready for our fun. There are many ways of entering the pool, but the best way is via the diving board. Of course, it does help if you put the board over the pool. Once in the water, there are many things you can do, like swimming. Now, for all you neophytes, those are swimmers made out of rubber, it is a good idea to start with the dog paddle. <whistles> yeah. Chewed the paddle up a little, didn't you? The second most widely used stroke is the butterfly. Before entering the water, wave the arms like a butterfly and... What do you know? An antlered fire-winged goofus. Put me down. A talking antlered fire-winged goofus. Oh, well. Even if you can't swim, just get yourself an old inner tube, put it around your middle, and jump in. Thank you, Mr. Nordahl. Mr. Nordahl? Last time, you remember, our heroes started out west to see the ranch they had just bought for $28. When they arrived in Squaw's Echo, Wyoming, everyone seemed very friendly, until... Where'd you say you fellas were gonna live? On our ranch! Well, ain't that just James Dandy? What's the name of it? The Lazy J! You sure got lonesome all of a sudden, didn't it? Nobody left but us and one stray dog! Just because we said Lazy J! <laughs> Time. Must be hard to hear him. Yeah. Maybe we ought to leave, too, whilst we are able. Oh, Bullwinkle, you're not going to let them scare you away, are you? I was toying with the idea, yes. Well, come on. And so undaunted... Well, only slightly daunted... Our friend set out for the Lazy J Ranch. Where does the ad say the ranch is? Just outside of town. Bound to be around here somewhere. How right you are, as usual. 
Looky there. Lazy J Ranch entrance. Well, West, here we are. Look out, Bullwinkle. Are you all right? I think so, but my nerves must be going bad. How come? I feel like I'm on pins and needles. Well, you are. That's a cactus. You see, you fell on a cactus. Okay, when okay. You... I get the point. And in a few minutes, our boys were picking their way down a steep, steep hill. Suddenly, a warning. Is that Bullwinkle? If I was any lower, I'd be looking up to see down. Somebody's shooting at us from that little house on the mesa. Uh-oh. We better go back to our place and get some help. We can't. This is our place. You're right. Let's not go there. Boy, that was close. Close? Bullwinkle, that cactus is clear on the other side of the valley. That's close enough. I'm going to see who it is at such a terrible shot. Okay. But don't help him any, hmm? And the plucky squirrel zoomed right toward the house and into a window. He pulled to a halt as a voice said, Hold it, fella. I know you're there. Well, how do you know I'm here? I hear you breathing. Now, mosey on out of here, you hear? Yeah, but I'm the new owner of the Lazy J. In that case, mosey on in. And our Rocky entered the bedroom of the small shack. In the bed was a huddled figure. Gee, who are you? I'm the old owner of the Lazy J. Yeah, what's your name? What else? I'm Lazy J himself. Was that you shooting at us? That's right. Thought y'all was rustlers. You're over this way. You're shooting in the opposite direction. Uh-huh. But if I was facing that way, I'd sure give you what for. Well, why don't you? Frankly, I'm too lazy. But in a little while, our heroes had propped Lazy Jay up to a standing position, and he began to show them the points of interest of the ranch. Over there is Dead Man's Swamp. That away you'll run into Grizzly Gulch, and over yonder is the Burning Bad Land. Isn't there any good land on the ranch, Lazy Jay? Oh, sure. The South 40's got some of the best land in these here parts. And it did, too. There was only one problem. The South 40 ran straight up and down. Oh, cows must be mountain climbers. Cows? What cows? No cows. Nary a hoof hiding her hair. Well, what do you raise on this ranch, anyway? I'd better whisper it to you. And as Lazy Jay whispered just one word into Bullwinkle's ear, the mighty moose's hair turned completely white all over. Be sure to see our next colorful episode. Except for me. Rocky Rides Again or Small in the Saddle. <laughs> Calling kids all this week during the Ozone to win this year's Nick or Treat Sweepstakes. And you could be one of 2,500 winners if you answer your telephone by saying, Nick or Treat. Friend to man and beast, a hero at the least. Funny, Doug Funny. Sunday at 10, 9 central on Nickelodeon. Kids Sports is a club that can...